Sages with Mustangs trying to make it back to the Mink League Championship Series. You could feel the momentum shift and they were able to take advantage. They are the Mink League champions for the seventh time in team history. The fourth. Paul Liner up the middle over the glove of Nibbins. One run will score. Two runs will score. And those guys were just so tough all year long, especially towards the end. You know, they got hot when it mattered the most. The St. Joseph Mustangs are 2021 Mink League champions. They were super excited for the opportunity to bring a championship back. Welcome into another edition of the St. Joe Mustangs show presented by Getz Credit Union and Triumph Foods. Chris Roush, Mitchell Riberall. What a week it was last week for St. Joe Mustangs. Yes. On the field, off the field, huge 4th of July celebration. You were here to be a part of every day of those. I was there for July 4th. Just, I think this was your first time out for the whole weekend experience. Yeah, it was. I was able to see the skydivers come in on the 3rd. The fourth, I mean, they obviously it was the July fourth, so the festivities there, and it, not even just the stuff off the field, but on the field, like you said. I mean, they had three walk off wins yeah. all within four or five days of each other, and that that was incredible. I was here as a fan for one night, able to watch the full thing, and just it was amazing. The fans get into it, the players get into it. It's it's something special here at Phil Welch. Before we get to those walk-offs, let's take a look back at all the festivities around the 4th of July celebration for the Mustangs. Baseball is a game of strength and sacrifice. And on this night, it defined it. I'm only going to think of the good things and be proud of the, what he did, especially when it came down to it, knowing that he stood there till the very end and did the job that was required of him. During the July 4th weekend, the St. Joseph Mustangs honored Private First Class Brian J. Bradbury's Gold Star family. Pretty cool that we didn't even ask for none of this. And yeah, we didn't ask for it kind to go above and beyond just saying his name. We're here playing uh, a baseball game and, and without people like Brian, I mean, it's it's not possible. and so. We're uh, very appreciative of the opportunity that we had. Bradbury, a Benton High School graduate, served his country, paying the ultimate sacrifice defending his brothers in arms, dying a hero on June 21st, 2006 in Afghanistan. Here is Brian, here's the enemy. Here's all of them back here. So that just goes to show you how close Brian was, they said he could even see faces. Part of the 10th Mountain Division and member of a six-man recon sniper team. In a battle known as Hill 2610 in June 2006, Bradbury's service to protect his country was on full display. Outnumbered and bullets flying and RPGs destroying the ground and everything around them, a group of more than a dozen soldiers, including Bradbury, ambushed by the enemy. Some of those letters that he wrote, I'm writing not to scare you, but we're going, they say this will be the biggest, the mission that they were on, they told them this will be the biggest mission in most military people's careers right now that we're about to send you on. Though mortally wounded, losing his arm in the fight, even a medevac helicopter trying to pull Bradbury to safety, but the cable couldn't hold him. Falling 100 feet onto rocks, yet still fighting, holding back the enemy to the very end. Very proud to hear that ap even after the, he was shot, he still maintained his position and he did, he did until he ran out of ammunition and until he was given the signal to retreat. His service ended on June 21st, 2006 as a hero and Bradbury and men who died that day will always be remembered by the survivors and their families, but also by all of us. There's so much that, that you know, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and we don't really under, you know, think about the sacrifices that others make and, and, and Brian especially, I mean, it's just an incredible story and, and what his family has been through and to have the opportunity to, to have them out here uh, was a special moment for us, uh, one that we won't soon forget. His story can be found in CNN Jake Tapper's book, The Outpost. But there's so much more to this St. Joseph native that died protecting us. Bradbury knew his time was short. A devout believer in God at Word of Life Church, Bradbury knew his time was coming. But his spirit never wavered. He wrote his love affair with God. And he wrote how much that he loved him and how he felt um, when he prayed with him. And um, 
he actually said in that God had put going or being in the army had put that in his heart. It's been 16 years since his passing, but the Mustangs honoring Bradbury's Gold Star family at the game Sunday night brought Brian's story back into the light. We don't get the birthdays, we don't get the right. Christmas, we don't, so having moments like these, it gives us that moment that we're missing of all the gatherings. It hasn't been easy for Brian's family, his wife and two daughters, mother, brothers, and their families. But telling his story keeps Brian's memory alive. I don't even care if they just say his name. To me, that keeps him alive. And when they stop talking about it, when they stop doing anything, and when they stop caring, that's, I just feel like that's when they die. Known as reserved, quiet individual, Brian wasn't about the spotlight, but through the years of honor and the salutes to his bravery, his family knows he would be so proud of his duty to his country. I can just see him, and I'll try to maintain, standing there with his chest puffed up and saying, this is something that I did, and being very proud of what he did. Welcome back to this week's episode of the St. Joe Mustang Show. Mitchell Riverall, Chris Roush. I almost said Chris Roush for me, but... That would have been weird. Been or fun. Weird. Yeah, weird. Yeah. I, I, I'll stick with Mitchell. But Chris, a lot of stuff, like you said earlier in the show, has been happening with especially host families and kind of all the families getting together. Yeah, a lot of these guys from come from across the country, even from around the world. I mean, just like you, you're from Oregon State. You're far away from home. We've kind of taken you in as, you know, yeah. part of our, like, you know... KQ2 St. Joe family. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Mini golfing. Mini golf. You haven't wanted to face me yet, but that's fine. That's all right. But host family wise, you know, these families take in these guys. They don't know them most often. Sometimes they maybe come back for a year or two, but these host families able to have a, a big meal with the guys and also some of the players own family on July 4th. A home away from home. They make it feel like home. St. Joseph Mustangs players and their host families gathered to celebrate the 4th of July holiday before the big game. A lot of these kids are away from their family for the whole summer so they can play baseball here. And so we just want to let them know that they're you know, part of our family and we want to make it as normal as possible. So we have a family picnic for our Mustangs family. <laughs> Mustangs players hail from all spots of the country, from Colorado to Rhode Island and even Japan. While most aren't able to celebrate the holiday with their loved ones, players feel they have a new family right here in St. Joe. It's been great. The guys on the team, them, um, their kids, yeah, it's been, it's been great. We want our house to be open to people and it was just a way where baseball family and softball family so we thought it'd be fun oh my gosh it's so much fun I mean this food's awesome I mean all the all the families have made it for us Carrie has a unique experience the future Nebraska corn husker just graduated from high school this is his first experience playing baseball away from his family it's definitely a little different because I've never experienced anything like this like same with a host family you know being on the road all the time playing in front of a crowd like this but it's awesome I really really enjoy it and it's definitely an experience I'll never forget. Carrie and one of his teammates stay with the Reynolds, who have been host parents for 10 years. Denise Reynolds, proud to be a part of the Mustang family. I just can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want to be a host parent, and I love being a host parent. It's so cool, especially when a host parent has kids that they can relate to the players and do. It's just an awesome experience. Reporting, Daniel Soxie. And joining us now on the St. Joe Mustangs show is the general manager and owner of the Mustangs, Kai Turner. Kai, a very busy week for you guys last week, July 4th celebration. Just, we're flying through the season at this point. Just what was that weekend like for you? We wouldn't have it any other way, Chris. So uh, this is what we look forward to all, uh, you know, fall, winter, spring, and summer. And so it's, it's always sad to see it move, but I mean, it happened so quick. And 
uh, I have never experienced uh, a stretch of games like we just witnessed. And so that's what so many people come to me and say, what, what is going on here? And, and uh, I think we've all kind of developed our own rituals and superstitions and, and it's working so far. So we just hope it continue to carry it off into this uh, playoff run. What's yep. your superstition? Whoa, Sorry. Whoa. He just brought up superstition. No, it's fine. It's fine. Go. Go. What's your superstition? He's uh, to right. continue to respect Mitch and uh, ignore you. Thank hey, you. Moving I on. like that. Go I ahead. like that. <laughs> you, you talk about the stretch of games, and especially with the playoff race heating up between you guys and really Clorinda for first in the north. Just What, what does that kind of do for you, and what, what have you seen from the guys in the dugout? Uh, you know, they're, they're fired up, and that's the thing. I mean, you, you kind of saw that, you know, when the Royals won the World Series in 2015. Like, you, you know, it, you keep the line moving. I don't know. For them, like, they just know they're in it. And so, like, on July 4th, when we were down by three, bottom of nine, and, and you just knew something was going to happen, and it did. And so I think that's kind of how it manifests itself is, is the confidence and believing what will happen. And I'll tell you, like, they're feeding off this crowd. The crowd's been great this year, and uh, the energy here, it's, it's just not something you can replicate. Oh, nothing? I was waiting for you to interrupt me again. Oh, I'll go then. Okay. Not too many weeks left in the season. What can fans look forward to now as we're kind of winding down the regular season too? Chris, there's two weeks left. I mean, yeah. regular season. And so not only am, you know, are we sad that Mustang season, when you like boil it down, like it's our last chance for maybe some of these guys to live in St. Joe with their host families, for the relationships they've built with the people in the crowd, our staff. You know, a lot of those people. So uh, it's always sad to see them kind of end it. I mean, it's a bittersweet moment. And so uh, it could be somebody's last, you know, game on the field. Uh, maybe a longtime Mustangs player who's pitched his last game or taken his last at bat. That's super, uh, you know, uh, super important deal for us too. So in the stands, we've got some fun promotions. This is kind of the fun putt. The fun putt. This is kind of the fun part for us is, you know, we continue some of our uh, promotions, you know, with Thursday night. I mean, this is the whole deal. This is why we do this. It's, it's for kids. And so that's why Thursday night, you know, we're doing the deal with, you know, you wear any youth sports. If you play soccer, baseball, softball, basketball, flag football, we don't care. Uh, you play any sport uh, and, you know, you're a kid 14 and under, we let you in free. Uh, on Thursday night. And then, of course, Saturday is a lot of fun. Not only is it a tenderloin night, uh, but we're hosting Missouri Western State University, and I know they'll uh, have some of their athletes and, and, and people from their uh, world over here, and, and they do a phenomenal job. Uh, we had a blast last year. That was probably one of my, my top three games last year, the environment that they kind of bringing, you know, the Missouri Western experience out here, and, and that was a lot of fun too. So it's really nice, you know, uh, uh, to have those things look forward to. And of course, we have a couple more fireworks nights left. So everyone likes fireworks. There's no better smell in the summer than the smell of uh, fireworks, especially after maybe a Mustang's walk-off win. So another year, the Mustangs putting out a tremendous performance for July 4th weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Really, they were home for five games straight, that Thursday through Monday, you know, trip right there at home at Phil Welch, but on the field. You write scripts and movies about walk-offs. I don't think you write that many walk-offs, though. Yeah, especially when, I mean, one game they were down 5-1 early, and then they come back, force it to 6-6, and... It goes into extra innings, and just having one walk off is hard enough by itself because you have to. Everything kind of has to hit right, but having three walk offs, mostly in a row, I mean that that's something pretty special, and that's not easy to do. But the Mustangs able to get that many in just that many nights as well. I think everyone knows, you know, the importance of uh, staying to the last out now. The Mustangs walk it off again! At some point, do Mustangs walk-off wins go from being extraordinary to the expectation? Our guys are super tough, you know, they're, they're fun, they're fun to be around, they have a never, 
never quit attitude and you know that starts from our coaches all the way to all the way down to you know our last player Dino gets that one right up the middle rounding third ball game Mustangs win it a walk off this team is definitely something uh, it's definitely something different than I've ever experienced uh, the camaraderie of the team how tight the boys are. In a week's time at Philwell Stadium from June 27th through July 4th, the Mustangs played seven games at Phil Welch, winning all seven, including a seven-inning run rule win, an exhibition victory, a play at the plate in the ninth to hold on victory, and four walk-off wins. Coming in to score the throw! Safe! This game is tied! You've got some people who say they're not going to show up till the sixth or seventh inning uh, just because they want to see the late inning heroics. And so we've also developed some fans who, uh, you know, through their own superstitions, now have to leave before uh, a certain inning just because of the way the comebacks have, have come and they want to play their own part too. The team returns home for two games this weekend on Friday and Saturday night. And you never know what kind of fireworks you'll see when this team comes home to play. When every guy gets up there in a clutch situation, it seems like he's super confident and knows that he's going to come through for the team. And there's no nerves, nothing, you know, it's just like another day at the office. Watching them compete, really having no fear, putting together good at bats and making big plays. They're so fun to watch. Um, this has been a fun summer. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Blaze's Battleground. Blaze is returning 6-0 champion this summer, and he is taking on an intern, Chase. It's me. You're taking on an intern. Yep. We ran out of players and coaches and front office people and sports people. Had to go people. get the big dogs. Rally going to show up. So Rally had other obligations. Rally was probably busy, but... He was in the stable. True. Rally? Maybe next week? Maybe next week. How do you feel about facing Chase? Good. My first intern. Do you think you'll beat the intern? Yes. I, I beat Kai, so... Fair point. I beat Johnny. Fair beat, point. I beat Brady, so... Fair point. Three and a... They're all not Chase. All those names you just said, not one of them was Chase. Well, I mean, they're part of the team of the Mustangs. It's true. You're, you're the intern, you know? This is boss level. Gentlemen, here we go. Question number one for Blaze. What year did the Mustangs start here in St. Joseph? 2009. That is correct. <laughs> Chase, for you, what was the first year of Phil Walsh Stadium? What year was it open? It was built in 1939, Chris. That is correct. One each. Who hit the walk-off winner on July 4th? Jack Wagner. That is correct. Centerfield wall. How deep is it? Oh... Is it 390, Chris Roush? That is really, really close, but... 400. That is correct. I that. Know your dimensions. Blaze, does Chase play college football? No. That is incorrect. Uh, Chase is a fullback. Okay. Just kidding. He's a linebacker. He's a linebacker. I'm trying to get him to fullback, but he doesn't really want to be a fullback yet, I guess. We'll see. We'll see. All right. You have one question right, one question wrong. It's your third question. When was the last year the Mustangs won a Mink League championship? That was 2021, Chris Roush. That is correct. Two and one each of you. You ready? Yep. Who was the first manager of the, Mink, uh, the Mustangs? There's been two. Johnny Coy, and who was the first? Matt Johnson. That is correct. He's three for four. You're two for three. How many Super Bowls has Patrick Mahomes won? He has won one Super Bowl, Chris Roush. Ooh, now it's three and three. How many World Series have the Royals won? Two. Dose. That is correct. Four to three. You get this question right, we go to sudden death. I love sudden death. You get it wrong. Blaze, Blaze wins. Seven and a yeah. that's, that's my line. You seem a little agitated. I'm ready to get this W. All right, here we go. What does Mink 
stand for? Great question. Uh, Missouri Inner uh, Missouri Inner North Kansas. Boys, is that right? No. It is what? Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas. Therefore, the winner, the reigning, defending, undisputed champion is Blaze Kemper for the seventh straight week. The intern goes back to the box office and thinks about what he has done. Welcome back to the St. Joe Mustang Show. Wrapping things up for this week, another memorable week on the show. The Mustangs really weren't home that much this week besides Monday, July 4th. They had a home game yesterday as well as tonight. Kind of a, a down week for the Mustangs. A couple days off. You get a couple days off. Mustangs with one, one road game, but we're getting down to the final few weeks. Mustangs sitting in a pretty good spot right now in the Minkley North Thanks in part to the walk-offs they've had the last couple of nights, too. Yeah, they're, I mean, battle for first, really, with Clorinda, just like last yeah. season. I mean, Clorinda, last year, we already know what they had. Mustangs went up and beat them there. And now for Mustangs to be in that race so close right now is kind of a good spot and kind of should give them a little more motivation and momentum headed into these final weeks and into playoffs. A lot to look forward to with the St. Joe Mustangs. Still plenty of baseball to be played out here at Fieldwell Stadium, but we're getting down into the final few weeks of the regular season, as well as the St. Joe Mustangs shoot. There's a few weeks left for us, but until next Saturday. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Well, well. Okay. Well, see ya.